What's going on guys? Welcome to another one of Black Iron's Battles. Today you're going to see another one of the multiplayer battles between me and Duff plays. And you'll see this time that I have taken the dwarves and I am facing off against a crazy Tomb King build. So we're doing a lot of experimenting and I have to give a disclaimer that this was one of Duff's first games with the Tomb Kings. Um, so, you know, I'm sure he's he's got all of his builds down by now. Um, but, you know, for this one, I was lucky to catch him when he was still early. And so uh, it makes me look look like I know what I'm doing. So here in my front line for the dwarves. So now they've got a ton of mass now. The dwarves did get a huge mass buff, so they're not as easy to smash through. In my front line, you'll see I have actually put gold chevrons. I've got one gold chevron um, into these long beards, which gives them 60 melee defense. So they're there's 59, sorry, but they're they're doing pretty good up here in the front. I've got three groups of those upgraded long beards, as well as two groups of miners with blasting charges. And uh, I've also got a bunch of units here in the back. I've got a group of thunderers. I've got a Thane here, which of course, like always, I've got that um, Master Rune of Gromny, uh, Stromny, sorry, Master Rune of Stromny Redbeard, as well as the Tormentor Sword, which they have changed the Tormentor Sword. So it, it's actually uh, only nine seconds long now, but uh, it recharges after every 90 seconds. You don't have to be in combat to recharge it anymore. Here we did try, I did think I would maybe bring some troll hammer torpedoes, which I thought may work for the Uptropti. And uh, in the back, I've got two groups of slayers. Now I, for my legendary lord, I've brought Grom Brindle, and he is just, the white dwarf is so cool. And one thing that I really like about Grom Brindle now is they have added the um, ability for him to um, have Grom Brindle has no fear, and that is built in. So um, I didn't use to take it, but it actually does come in handy sometimes, I've come to learn. Here in the back, you'll see we've got two cannons, which I was um, hoping would really be able to also take care of those who's chopped -y. But you'll see I'm just packed right here in the in up against the cliffs. Here on the right flank, Dov Plays has brought um, some skeleton horsemen. So I hadn't really seen those yet. You see they've got spears there, and those are just like kind of tier one um, horses. They're very fast. They've got 76 speed, but not great combat stats. So those are, um, you know, going to have a hard time finding a place against a dwarf team. Here in the back line, you'll see he's got some skeleton warriors, and he does have the screaming skull catapult. So those guys are, um, those are like uh, the Tomb King's um, catapults. You see they've got armor piercing and high infantry, but they do do magic damage. So besides their um, their armor piercing, they also add take cover, which reduces leadership. So um, against the dwarves, they may not be the best pick because of their magic damage, but at the same time, because of their armor piercing and the fact that they they smash down tight, tightly knit groups, um, it's a good, ch you know, it was it was an idea to bring him in the beginning when we were testing. He's also got skeleton warriors protecting that group. So that's pretty good. And then here in the back, you'll see he does have a casket of souls. So that is also a magic art artillery. Um, and, and you'll see that with his army here, he's got a pretty good theme. He's got all sorts of ranged units and he's really trying to punish my lack of mobility. So you see he does, uh, it does also increase the power reserves of his caster, which is helpful. And each one of his uh, three artillery pieces has a group of skeletons um, protecting it. Here in the front, you'll see he's got some Ushapti with great bows. One, two, three. One Ushapti, two Ushapti, three Ushapti, four Ushapti with great bows. And this one is the Chosen of the Gods, which are the Regiment of Renown. And you'll see that they actually have Shield Breaker, which makes it, um, it reduces the opponent's ability to block attacks. Um, and you'll see those missiles actually split in the air, which is really cool. Here in the back, you'll see he's also got on top of a chariot, Archon the Black, Archon the Black. So um, Nagash is uh, number one general there. Um, Archon, he's got the Tomb Blade. So he's able to replenish his own hit points. He's got Libra Mortis to do that 44% ward save. He's got tons of damage spells, Soul Blight, Purple Sun of Xerxes. He's also got Life Leech. Um, you know, he's got just a bunch and bunch of damage. And being on that uh, that chariot should help him push through, even though it won't help him as much anymore without the or with the dwarf's new mass. He's also got the Blessed Legion of Facts and uh, the Skeleton Archer is there for that armor sundering. So those are like, just like the rest of the areas, they're that armor sundering and is pretty much always in include i think at this point here on this side you'll see he's got a second group of skeleton horsemen and those guys are just uh, there to come around that other flank and really just try to be um yeah I, I assume he brought them to try to get into any artillery i might bring and who would have thought the dwarves would bring artillery overall let's go ahead and get this battle started so you'll see here right off the bat that these cannons are just going to start taking shots and i really wanted to see how well they would take ushapti so even though the cannons are pretty accurate, I don't think that they they may not be the best answer for Ushapti. 
at the same time we have actually hit hit the uh hit the chosen of the gods over here with a couple of cannonballs and they have taken almost a fifth of their their health and damage already besides that you'll see here that he has actually um, got his screaming skull catapults coming in at me so those Screaming Skull Catapults, um, you see they're mashing in there. That one landed in there, and it did kill five of the miners. Um, but that's okay. If he wants to shoot at my miners, I'm more than more than happy to let that happen. Here in the back, you'll see that he is starting to kind of bring around these Skeleton Horsemen. And at this point, I'm just trying to do everything I can to kind of take out these Ushabtooth Great Bows. See, my cannon actually hit again. And this time, um, <laughs> I think... Oh, no, he still got back up, so we haven't lost... Um, haven't even killed one Ushabti yet. But at the same time... Um, we haven't lost any cannons either, so we're doing okay. Um, at this point, we're just, I'm just, you see me, I'm kind of moving my whole army back and forth. My thunders have taken some big hits from, um, from the Ushaptis, I think. Um, oh man, and then he gets right in here, you see that the skeleton horsemen are able to get there into my cannon? And the second group of skeleton horsemen actually gets in over here. But the big thing, the thing that I actually have that I thought is super cool, Brom Brindle has no fear. So even though these cannon uh, crews are off of their cannons, they are going to stand here and fight, and they're going to allow these slayers to a chance to get in the back here. And these slayers are going to go to town. If we take a look here, you see those slayers and even the cannon crews fighting, and those those skeleton horses are have to get the hell out of there. Here on the right, you see the Ashopti are actually focusing my Iron Drakes, and they have taken some heavy, heavy hits, as have the Thunderers. I mean, there's just big, big damage um, being taken from from these. Even though they're doing magic damage, the Screaming Skull Catapults are hitting me pretty hard. I mean, they're super inaccurate, if, if you've noticed. I mean, I don't know if this Casket of Souls has hit anything thus far, but even though they're inaccurate, they're, um, you know, when they do hit, they do pretty good damage to my tightly packed Dwarf units. Here in the back, you'll see I've got these cannon crews still alive, and these skeleton horsemen have gotten flash bombed, and so I think that's going to be it for this group. The second group is over here, and they're going to try to come in here, and you see, oh man, look at those Ushabti charging in. They're going to come in here and take those miners, and that is fine for me. That's what those miners are here for. Um, they're in here just to take damage. They've got some armor piercing. If they can take out a few of those horsemen and those and those uh, Ushabti, I am more than happy to oblige. Here on the hill, you see we've actually got the Thunderers going to start shooting. And they're going to be firing right into these expensive units over here. So that should be pretty good. We've also in the back got our cannons back online. And we're starting to get our Slayers and everything. And we're going to start bringing them up over here to battle. Here in the back, you'll see we have actually got these troll, troll hammer torpedoes coming up, and hopefully I can get them to take at least a shot because these because they haven't done anything thus far. Here on the right, the miners with blasting charges are into these these chosen of the gods, and that is just a great thing for me. They have they have armor piercing; they'll be able to kill some Ushabti, and if they can tie them up, I'm I'll be a happy camper. These troll hammer torpedoes don't seem to be doing much, but over here in the middle, I'm still doing okay. We've got these heavy, heavy upgraded longbeards, and they're going to cut through these Ushabti with great bows with no problem. You see the longbeards in here? They've these this, these units almost still full. My Thane is still doing great. We've got um, Archon the blocks right in here in the middle, but the Grumbling Guard are keeping everyone happy, keeping everyone fresh. And that Thane and these uh, these upgraded Longbeards will start cutting through everything at this point. You see here the Skeleton Warriors are, are actually starting to crumble already. And Arkhan's got to get out of there before he gets surrounded and killed. If we take a look from above, um, you can see that it's just neck and neck. Dov and I are so close. But at this point, I've got both of my cannons back online. And boom, look at that Casket of Souls. I think it just took so shots from six cannons. It is already to critical binding. And after, I think, one or two more hits, it'll be gone. So now that these cannons are in the back here, I don't think that he's got anything that can get onto them. And you'll see here that they'll just be firing and firing. And they'll start taking out all of these artillery units. We've got the, the Casket of Souls crumbling, and so we're going to turn next on this Screaming Skull Catapult. And you see, that is just demolished. Those cannons are going to take that out, no problem. And you can see these splitting these splitting arrows are actually starting to fire in, so I am real worried. And I get these long beards on top of these Chosen of the Gods real quick. I do not want them firing. Over here on the right, you'll see that, of course, these miners are taking out those Skeleton Warriors. The Iron Drakes are off the field, only six damage done, so they were not useful in this situation. Um, the, the Thunderers are almost gone, but here in the middle, we've still got Grom Brindle. We've still got these two groups of Slayers, and everything that they touch is going to die. Over here on the left, we finally got our Miners with Blasting Charges. You see they're going to toss some charges there. I don't think that'll do much good, but... Um, you know, either way, once they once they do finish those blasting charges, they're gonna get in there and they'll take out that screaming skull catapult. There is no question about that. 
Here you'll see there's still about half the longbeards left, 49 models, and they're going to fight against these Ushabti with great bows. And they'll cut them down no problem. I mean, the Ushabti do have good weapon strength. They've got armor piercing. Um, but, I mean, just the number of longbeards that are here will mean that over time, these, these eight Ush Ushabti will definitely die. Here in the back, you'll see the Thane has finally crushed um, the Casket of Souls there. He's raising his hands above his head. He's going to start heading back in. And the balance of power is finally starting to move in my favor. So you'll see that these cannons are still shooting. They're back in here, and now they're going to start landing right into the Blessed Legion effect. So um, those Ushapti Great Bows are almost gone. The Longbeards here are still holding strong. We've got everyone kind of charging in. Boom! Look at there's a Chariot Charge come from Arkan. He's got 50 kills already, but... Um, at this point, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what to kind of target. I've got a bunch of slow-moving units over here, and um, I really, really need to finish taking out all of these uh, these catapults. Oh man, there's my dog. That's chaos. Chaos is, is such a good boy. Um, sorry for if he if he's barking here a little bit now and again, but uh, he's he's almost ten months old. He's a giant German Shepherd. So if you see here, me and Dob, I'm starting to wrap it up, but it is not over yet. He's still got Archon. He's still got some some units spread across here. These are Shopti with great bows. Um, Blessed Legion. He's got Chosen of the Gods, and um, if he can keep everyone moving, he may be able to take me out. However, though, these skeleton warriors are way off over here chasing people in. Look at <laughs> He dropped. He's dropping. He's still dropping spells with Archon, but I'm not sure that that's going to help. Um, Grom Brindle's in here. He's got Foe Seeker activated, and he'll cut Archon down real easy. He's got 500 weapon strength. He's got armor piercing. And as soon as we can, um, I mean, our Grumbling Guard is still in here oh, giving vigor bad. bonuses. And uh, as soon as we can, we're just going to wrap this up. You see a look over here on the left we finally took out that artillery and it was a lot harder to kill than i had thought and at this point i think that's just about army losses and uh, i was able to pull this one right out of the teeth of dov so if we take a look at dov's army i mean i just love these tomb king armies I mean, he had a casket of skulls two screaming skull catapults as well as four ushabti great bows I mean, put together with the Blessed Legion of Fact, this is just a huge ranged army to try to take advantage of the fact that all of my units are kind of slow. Um, and he definitely, you can see what he was doing, because these horsemen were here to take out my artillery, and then he was just going to punish the rest of my units while I kind of tried to move through all of those spread out positions that he had. He had a ton of skeleton warriors to protect his artillery. I mean, overall, Archon was Arcan the Black was all over the place with that chariot, but um, luckily for me, I did have these two cannons, and being able to use Grom Brindle has no fear. When they were attacked, really did I think help keep me alive. It allowed my slayers to get in there and you know take out those skeleton horsemen. And uh, once those were gone, I think those cannons. I mean, there wasn't a lot he could have done. I think he could have maybe tried to have um, you know the Ushabti Great Bows kill the cannons, but. And they did a really good job killing what they did. I mean, those Thunders really didn't get to do much. Um, neither did the Iron Drakes. They were pretty much taken out immediately. Their range was just not not able to keep up with the range of, of Dov's army here. Um, luckily for me, I did have these strong Longbeards in the front line. Even my Miners with Blasting Charges did pretty well. Because of their cheap costs, I didn't feel too uncomfortable sending them out to the flanks to deal with uh, whatever I could get their hold, uh, hold of. And since, since they were able to tie up a lot of these Great Bows for a long time, it was really helpful for me. You said Grom Brindle wasn't uh, wasn't really able to, I mean, him and the Thane, it was really just about killing the units at this point. Um, Dov was about to, I think I think that was pretty much it. I mean, we could have, we would have been able to hold down Arkan with the Tormentor Sword and take him out. Um, but, you know, at that point, I think, um, you know, I think it was pretty much it. Overall, it was just a great game, though. And like I said, is a um, disclaimer is that this was the first day we were we were playing a ton of games together, me and Dov. So um, he were testing out builds. This is not a competitive build, I don't think, on his part. I think he was having fun playing with the the. Uh, the artillery and i will say that the casket of souls i found and the screaming skull catapults are just not accurate enough to do well um the chosen of the gods the ushabti great bows are really good um so are the, i mean the skeleton horsemen are pretty good at what they're good for tier one cavalry um all of this was here if he had if he had switched this this uh, screaming skull catapults and casket of skulls for maybe like a Cameron War Sphinx or something like or like a Necro Sphinx. Um, that I think that would have that would have taken the cake. That would have made it so that he would have easily pulled out that victory. 
And uh, it was just a fun, fun game, though. I want to thank you guys all so much for watching. Uh, thank you guys so much for supporting the channel. Please subscribe if you can. I'm really trying to hit a, a thousand subscribers. Tell your friends. Tell your family. Black Iron is always down to battle. Um, you know, send me an email if you want to get some two versus twos going. Um, I really do just like playing the game, having a good time with you guys, and. Uh, I want you guys to, uh, in, you know, let me know if you have anything that you'd like me to do, anything you want me to play. So again, thank you guys for watching. Uh, have a wonderful evening. This is Black Iron, and this has been another one of Black Iron's Battles.